we're going to go ahead and pray, and, uh, and then we're going to go from there. Heavenly Father, in the name that's above every name, the precious, wonderful, awesome, and magnificent name of Jesus, Lord, we come before you this morning, and as we just breathe in your presence this morning, we just rest in you. Lord, we fix our eyes on he who is above all things. And your name is above everything. Your name is above fear. Your name is above worry. Your name is above stress and strife. Your name is even above COVID-19, the coronavirus. Your name is above every situation, circumstance, because, Lord, you said you have overcome the world. Yes. And we have nothing to fear. So, Lord Jesus... We give you the glory. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. We're going to take time and worship and call upon you. You said, call upon me and you will hear us. So, Lord, we call upon your great name. And, Lord, we honor you and worship you this morning and give you praise, honor, glory, adoration. Lord, we just are in awe of you. And, Lord, we thank you for your people this morning who are attending uh, as they sit in their homes, Lord, and take time to come in and, and just to hear from you, hear your voice. And Lord, we just pray that that will be the case this morning, that you will impart truth to them, give ears to hear. And also, Lord, we pray for those who are sick this morning, those who've been infected yes, uh, by uh, this virus, uh, and those family members who are having to deal with loss, those who are dealing with those who are presently sick, but we know that the name of Jesus is above and is able to heal and set free those who are sick or those who are in anguish. Lord, we, we provoke your name this morning, the power of your name this morning against sickness and disease. Lord, Lord we, we thank you that you will rescue us from the devourer. You will rescue us from sickness, disease, and pestilence, and plagues. And Lord, we speak over those this morning who are sick by the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray your power is present yes. to heal yes. right now, Thank right you. where there, there is no distance in the spirit. And Lord, your people, and even those who may not know your name, Lord, let them call upon the name of Jesus yes. that they will not only be saved, but they will be healed and they will be set free and delivered. Lord, I come against fear this morning because your word says you have not given us the spirit of fear, but a power, the power of the Holy Spirit. Love, the love of God, which is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. And a sound mind, meaning you've given us the mind of Christ. We can think like God because we have your nature by the Holy Spirit. Yes. So Lord, we just thank you right now of all the blessings, the benefits. Lord, you forgive us of all our sins and heal us of all our diseases. And Lord, we're the ch you've made us children of God by the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. So we thank you for your shed blood, Lord Jesus. And Lord, that you welcome us into a new family. Yes. We thank you and praise you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, so this morning, so uh, before we get into worship, and, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to do a little preliminaries, and then we're going to welcome uh, Mr. Jedekiah Coy. He's going to lead our worship this morning. We are so excited about having him here uh, this morning, and so when he comes up, and we just want you to just bathe into the presence yes. of God. A couple of things this morning. Uh, if you uh, want to give to New Nation, you can even write us, you can mail us at uh, New Nation Worship Center, and it's 500 uh, North Washington Street, and that's Cortez, Colorado, 81321. But the other thing we want you to do is we just want to give attention to the Word of God more than anything. We want you to give attention to the worship of God. So again, uh, we just thank you in advance. We thank you for those who have been giving and those who continue to be faithful, those who belong to New Nation Worship Center and those outside. So we're going to thank you for that. And we'll try to make sure uh, we give uh, even our PayPal account if you want to do that as well. But I want to get past that because we want to get into worship and we want to get into loving on the Lord. So uh, we're just uh, right now settle back. If you got your coffee, your tea, uh, if you're feasting or whatever it may be, this you're still having breakfast in your pajamas or whatever, Let's get ready to worship. Jedekiah, come on. Well, thank you, Pastor Rod and Delphine. 
Uh, I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, we were having a long conversation on the phone a few days ago, and um, I forget how the, the song came up, but I, I wanted to share the song with them. I, I played it for the church several years ago, and there may be a few of you out there watching that, that might know the words. They, uh, It's okay. Um, it's okay if you don't. Uh, I haven't played it a lot. It hasn't been around a lot. So just want to give a little backstory to this. Uh, while I was attending the Foursquare Church here many years ago, uh, as I was giving my life back to God, uh, he was he was he was trying to get me to be a part of the worship team. And I remember going home from church many, many, many times and just crying because I knew that the Lord was was calling me to use my gifts and talents for His glory. Yeah. And how long it took me to finally say yes. I, I believe about four years. A long time. So the song God gave me here is, is literally talks about how God talks to all of us. And how easily it is for us in our human nature to just brush it aside and say, well, that's not God. Or mm, I don't feel like doing that. So the song really is an inspiration to all of us yeah. because we're all different and unique and God gave us each and every one special gifts Amen. and we we are called to utilize those for his glory so this song this song is called um, when he calls <laughs>
family and friends. Thank you for joining us this morning. Um, am I switching? Okay. <laughs> thank you for joining us this morning. Um, before I begin, I want to thank my husband who asked me to speak. Um, we, uh, being quarantined, I guess at home, uh, you can imagine how it is for two preachers. <laughs> And so after we were just sharing the word and just um, enjoying some revelations that the Lord had given us, he just said, why don't you speak Sunday? So I said, okay. So we've been on this journey of ministry together for 33 years. Um, so I'd like to um, just shout out to those who are viewing from Alabama, as well as our New Nation Worship Center family, and all those viewers who are in the Western Slope in Colorado. Um, let us pray. Holy Spirit, thank you for being here this morning. Thank you for reminding us that we need to rise up. Yeah. Lord, Holy Spirit, we thank you that you will give your people an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. There are many voices that are speaking right now but you said, Lord, that your sheep know your voice and a stranger they will not follow. So, Holy Spirit, help the hearers to connect the dots in their minds, in their hearts, in their spirits this morning. And they may, may they be challenged today to understand their God-given identity and be brave at heart and stand firm in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So uh, before I get into the message this morning, I want to do a short review of what God has been speaking to us over the past uh, three weeks or so now since we've been in quarantine. Um, and then I want to get into some prophetic insights of what we need to be prepared for in the future. Uh, the first week at home, as my husband and I shared, the Lord reminded us uh, to look unto him, Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, and to return to the Lord by repenting. And so the scriptures that were brought out there was Hebrews 12 and 2, Hosea 4 and 1, and Hosea 6 and 1. 
Hosea 6, 1 expressed to encourage us to return to the Lord. Now, I didn't at the time when I presented expound on the book of Hosea, but God showed me the connection with his expression of love by his prophet, by showing love, uh, the, his prophet Hosea, who showed love to his um, Gomer, his wife, who was a harlot. This is an example of God's love for Israel as well as his church, as well as his continued love for us. And then we address repentance in that first message. Second Chronicles 714. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then we will hear from heaven and he will forgive us of our sins and heal our land. Rod did a few short messages in between those Sunday messages and I did as well on our personal Facebook pages to encourage those who might be experiencing anxiety and fear and hopelessness and a lack of peace. During this time of quarantine, as we've gone to the park various times, it's just really, really been so wonderful to see families together in the park, riding bicycles and husbands and wives holding hands, walking in the park. And just seeing how many people are just reaching out to others that have needs. Isaiah 26, three tells us, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Also, a few weeks ago, um, I did a midweek teaching. I shared a dream that I had and I spoke on the invisible war of worship. In that message, I address idols that we might have in our lives and how God is a jealous God. Exodus 20 and 3 tells us that God tells us anyway, this word, that you shall have no other gods before me. And Deuteronomy 6, 5, we're reminded that you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. Let me repeat that. Deuteronomy 6 and 5. You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. In the New Testament, when Jesus was answering a scribe who asked him, Master, which is the first commandment of all? And in Mark 12, 30 and 31, it tells us, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second like it is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Since then, God has been giving me further revelation. So I may be doing a series of teaching on that topic, the invisible war of worship at a later time. But because so many people during this quarantine have been asking questions as to how this relates to the end times, Rod has been doing a midweek teaching on the subject, is the coronavirus a sign of the end? And he's been expounding on portions of the book of Revelation, a significant verse in Revelations 1 and 19, where Jesus tells John, write the things which you have seen and the things which you are, which are, and the things which will take place after this. Jesus is the one who is. He is the one who was. And he is the one who is to come. So we see in the book of Revelation, three distinct chronological divisions in John's vision, which also address the seven churches of the apocalypse. 
Although the dispensational interpretation suggests that the outline of the churches is throughout church history and through certain eras and centuries, it is applicable to God's people or his church today for all ages. In Isaiah 49, 6, 9, and 10, remember the former things of old, it tells us, for I am the God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, things that are not yet done. Saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Therefore, when we address apocalyptic revelation, it is applicable for us today. Hebrews 13, 8 tells us, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God's word is true, and it is present for today. Also, I mentioned in a short video I did after Palm Sunday um, on my personal Facebook page that the Bible is a prophetic book. And Jesus' ride into Jerusalem was prophesied in Zechariah 9 9. But it, we need to, and that was delivered 400 years before its fulfillment. I also emphasize that there is a link between ancient history, biblical prophecy, and heavenly signs. Interestingly, the night I did the teaching on the invisible war of worship, there was a pink supermoon. Luke 21, 25, and 26 tells us that there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth, the stress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, and men's hearts will be failing them for, from fear, and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And people today, I want to let you know that if you are not rooted in Jesus, everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Just a few years ago, I began to learn the significance of understanding our Hebraic roots. Why? Why? Well, I learned that Israel is God's timepiece and the clock is ticking because the covenant that God made with Israel is irrevocable. God cannot lie. And because the church was grafted in, we need to have this understanding. Grafted in means we are one in Christ. Last week, Rod taught on, and he used several scriptures of God's heart for Israel and the freedom we have from the law. It, was a, it wasn't a typical resurrect, resurrection message, but it was necessary to keep us doctrinally sound on the mystery of the cross. Ephesians 2, 14 and 15 tell us, for he himself is our peace, who has made both one, and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of commandments, contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from two, thus making peace, and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity one new man, Jew and Gentile. When God gave us a revelation and vision for New Nation Worship Center, this scripture, he, he gave us revelation of this scripture, along with 1 Peter 2 and 19, where it says, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Years ago, I never forgot about, um, and you might be asking, let me back up. You might be asking, why is this important? Why must we know our identity? 
Years ago, again, as I, um, I, I was stating, a mighty woman of God made a statement that I never forgot. She stated, without identity, you will not fulfill your destiny. I'd also like to acknowledge a minister of God that my husband and I sat under years ago in the school of ministry. And during that time, he did an alphabetized scriptural writing entitled, My Identity in Christ. And as I was uh, reminded of these uh, statements, the Lord gave me one that I'd like for you to remember. And it says, when you know who you are, you can live out who you are. Let me repeat that. When you know who you are, you can live out who you are. And so God is calling his church to live out loud for Jesus, to live in love for Jesus. The church doesn't have to find its voice. It just has to use its voice and say what God has been saying and is still saying. God has a destiny for his church. And if you don't know who you are and who he's called you to be, you may miss how he wants to use you in this hour. I'm so thankful this morning and I could cry right now that Jedekiah shared his song. Because in that song, the lyrics state that we must rise up, that we must use our gifts that God has given us. Because God wants us to be a part of fulfilling his plan in the earth. And we need to know who we are. And we need to get in place. And we need to get in position. Many of God's people are sitting on gifts. Or maybe they're dormant. In 1 Corinthians tells, in 1 Corinthians 12, excuse me, it tells us that Paul would not have us to be ignorant of these gifts. But let's turn to 1 Corinthians 12, 4 and 11. And as you heard the testimony of Jedekiah, there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another interpretations of tongues. And then we see also an uh, expounding of gifts, I believe in 1 Corinthians 14 that mentions the service gifts, but we're all called to be servants. These gifts are from the Holy Spirit. They're for the common good of the church. Maybe you're afraid this morning. Second Timothy, my husband quoted earlier, one and seven tells us, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. So before I get into, as I've done this review, I'm gonna move into the message that God has given me for you today or for all of us, and that is brave heart, brave heart. God gave me the title of this message days before I actually watched this movie, just a couple of days ago. And I read where this movie in 1995 was the winner of five Academy Awards. It depicted a true story of a Scottish rebel, rebel William Wallace. Who played, who was, who was played by Mel Gibson, and I think he produced it as well. And he leads an uprising in the 13th century against a cruel English ruler. Bravery was expressed by Willem Wallace, which inspired Robert the Bruce. And although the script, as in any movie, oftentimes 
that is usually made based on a true story may not be entirely true, the general content of the film inspires a passion for bravery and courage and one understanding his or her identity. I'd like to make a disclaimer that my intention for using the movie as an analogy in this message is not to inspire violence, but to inspire passion, a passionate desire to use one's gifts and service to fulfill God's divine plan in the earth. Ironically, upon watching the film, I discern an un unexpected systemic, systemic reality of the parallels of the evils of our day with those who have money, power, and control. I'd like to read Matthew 24, 3 to 13. Now, as Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will all these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceive you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And, be, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. So we see here God describing a time that sounds similar to what we're living in now. There is much deception. There is lawlessness. But we must endure. Amen? So God is calling us to be one. One of my favorite scriptures that I learned years ago is John 17, 21. And it states that they, Jesus, as a matter of fact, Jesus prayed this prayer before he went to the cross. And his prayer was, Father, I pray that they all may be one as you, Father, and I are one. And that they also may be one in us, that the world might believe that you sent me. So the message this morning, brave heart is inspired by God calling his people, inspired within me, to inspire you, that God is calling his people to rise up. God is calling his church to rise up. He's calling his apostles to rise up. He's calling his prophets to rise up. Pastors, teachers, evangelists, rise up. He's calling his church to come into an alignment. Acts 2 and 17 and 18 tells us, and it shall come to pass in the last days, God says, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they shall prophesy. God wants his people to come together. He is tearing down denominational walls and he's calling his kingdom forward. His kingdom is at hand. 
Thy kingdom come, O Lord. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So he's calling his people to have a to become brave at heart. He's calling his people to arise. And I mentioned to you that in the end of this message that I was going to share some prophetic insights into what the future holds for us. Well, in light of this message, I was awakened with a poetic word. A world full of masks and materials, unable to hide your true identity. For someone is always watching with electronic eyes to expose or recognize who you really are, superficially, artificially. Evils of our day displayed not with arrows and spears, but with tests and technologies. Yes, many have betrayed, not for land and titles, but for control and thrones. Do not lose heart, but believe. Believe in the gospel, the promise of eternal life. Do not lose heart, but guard your heart. You try to hide, but you're not hidden. Eyes everywhere. Do you know, O oh church? Do you know who you are? Or do you care? Do you know your identity to fulfill God's destiny? A new creation made in the image of a creator who has a plan for eternity. Mortal kings lie and cannot be trusted. But it's your decision, O oh church, who will be your king. Arise, O church, you must awaken. Christ is coming for a bride without spot or wrinkle. He desires to purge us, cleanse us with the Holy Spirit, but not with a sprinkle. Arise, O saints, and get in position. Shut off the noise so your spiritual ears can listen. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you that you have spoken. We thank you, Lord, for your cry, for the sound of the trumpet to your people, to arise, to know who they are, to get in position. Thank you for your love for us, Lord. Thank you for giving us courage. Thank you for making us brave, for giving us boldness. Thank you. As I close, and I was in prayer and preparation for this message, the Lord gave me some words to some people. And I just want to share them before we end. You may be watching live, or you may be watching or may view this in the future. The first individual is a man with a strong prophetic gift to see what is going on nationally and internationally. And because you are not plugged into the church, you don't fully understand the gift that God has given you. And it's not being used for God's glory. And it's not benefiting anyone. It's going to waste. But God is speaking to your heart right now. And he is calling you. He is calling you. 
The second individual is a leader that has influence. And God wants you to watch Braveheart because in your heart, you really don't like the injustices that you have seen in society and in the, in the, in the arena in which you lead. But you have feared loss. You have kind of went along to get along, but God is giving you a new heart. He's giving you courage and he's giving you boldness. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And lastly, I heard the word Nairobi and I actually misspelled it. And then I looked and realized this was in Kenya. But there's a young man that is watching. And you have a heart for Nairobi. And I don't know if your heart, the heart that you have is because of ancestral descent. Or because you've studied this area. But God has given you a heart for this place. But God is imparting boldness. He is imparting boldness to you right now to go. To get out of your comfort zone. And to go. And as I close... I want to remind those who are near us here in Cortez. That God brought us here because he spoke those same words. He told us to get out of our comfort zone. And oftentimes for you to be who God has called you to be and live out who you are, you've got to get out of your comfort zone. The mission statement of New Nation Worship Center is to make new disciples, to go to new places. And my husband, if you'll come, hun. <laughs> My husband and I have been called here, sent by God, Amen. to help you fulfill that, Amen. Amen. to fulfill the destiny that God has for you. Amen. We are getting ready to close we just thank you for joining in this morning and uh, spending time with us but most importantly spending time with God yeah. I really believe that again if you've heard some of the teachings we've done that God is not the one who brought forth this virus you know Jesus said the thief comes to steal kill and destroy we need to put our eyes yeah on the truth yes jesus came to give us life and give it to us more abundantly when you just seek his face seek the kingdom of god and his righteousness which is jesus who is our righteousness and all these other things will be added to it we give it but we need to come against the enemy in the spirit yes. and pray against the enemies in the natural who would do evil who would do things that are not pleasing, those things that would destroy and hurt others, those that is the work of the enemy. Yes. So in the name of Jesus, yes. we come against the works of the enemy right now, those in the spirit realm and human individuals yes. and groups who would try to separate and divide and destroy mankind. But Lord, we ask you to uproot, yes. to expose, yes. to throw down, 
and tear down the works of the enemy that will try to destroy men's lives. Lord, you are the God who brings life yes. and love and hope and joy. So we come against the enemy in the name of Jesus. Name we pray that every plot, yes. every scheme yes. of the enemy be foiled and destroyed in the name of Jesus. We come against the spirit of fear yes. and despair. Lord, even against the spirit of suicide, yes. uh, uh, mental uh, anguish yes. and, and anxiety. Lord, those who feel like they're cooped up, Lord, we ask you that they would come to you. Yes, Lord. You said draw not to you. Yes. And you would draw that to Thank us. You, Lord. Lord, help us as the people of God. We're not cooped up. You're the God who said, go into your closet. Yes. Call upon the Lord. Yes. And seek him. I'm telling you, church. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, people of God. God is calling us to himself. Yes. yes. Don't say I'm bored. Don't say I don't have anything to do. You've got a God who says, I want you. Hallelujah. I want your face. Thank you. Seek my face. Thank you, Lord. I love you, son. Yes. I love you, daughter. Yes. I love you, man. I love you, woman. Come in. Thank you, Lord. Commune with me. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. He says, as you come in, I will imprint myself upon you. Thank you, Jesus. And then I will expose and open up to you things that are going on. Yes. God said he reveals. Yes. His secrets. Thank you. Hid in mysterious things to those who will seek him. I don't know about you, but the Bible says the Spirit will even show us things to come. But we've got to commune yes. with him. You should want to know as a child of God. He will reveal in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So as we close, those of you who are sick, yes. we pray for your healing this morning. Yes. And we pray that you get hungry for God. Yes. Hungry for his word. Yes. Hungry for the kingdom of God. He says, they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness yes. shall be filled. We love you here at New Nation Worship Center. And again, thank you for joining in. Thank you for worshiping with us. Thank you for hearing the word of the Lord. My wife brought this one. I'm okay. That was a powerful, powerful Word. So go back, listen, take notes. And, uh, and we also thank you for those of you who continue to support us, those who are here in Cortez and surrounding area, those back home in uh, Huntsville, North Alabama, and anyone else part of our Fort Square family. Yes. We love you. We love, we love you. you. Thank you, friends. Thank you, family. We love you. In Jesus' name, have a good day. Have a good day. Amen. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.